So let's summarize and wrap up our C string processing. C provides some libraries for working with C strings. We've seen some of them in use in our last video with our program that broke apart and concatenated some strings. In order to use those functions, you have to include the C string header file. And those functions take those C strings as arguments. So here's an example where you can find the length of a string by passing the string into the string length function. It will actually find the length of the string, which would be the number of characters before the null, rather than just returning you the array size. You can also concatenate two strings together. The first parameter is the string, and the second parameter is the contents that you're going to add to that first string. Here's an example here. If we want to add the state to our location string, we can concatenate the two together. Because these were created by using the string literals, they will have the null characters at the end. And so based on the location of the null character in the location variable, it will take that point and concatenate on the state, which also is properly null terminated. You can do a string copy, which copies one string into another string. As I mentioned when we were looking at the code, that this is a dangerous uh, operation because there's no bounds checking. If there's no uh, null, it will keep copying in and can overwrite. And so you should avoid using the string copy. Now, unfortunately, the string cat also has that same problem. As I mentioned during the string cat, that these were properly null terminated, so they stopped. But if they were not properly null terminated, then it could go beyond the character array and be reading and copying data inappropriately. So it's safer to use the string end cat function and the string end copy function that will only allow n characters to be copied from one string to another. So if you see a string concatenation method or a string copy that isn't using the n, you should replace that with the n. What's nice about it is that it will copy no more than n characters. It will still abide the null terminator. Here's another nice function. This is a function that will allow you to find an occurrence of a string in another string. And so we use that in our uh, program to find the occurrence of a comma. Here's an example where we're looking for the occurrence of ABA in the Wabash River. If you call this function, it will return the pointer to the location of that ABA. And so if I were to write this out, it, it starts at the ABA, but since it didn't add a null terminator to it, it will just keep writing it out until the end of the Wabash word. String compare is another function that we looked at in the program. And here just spells out exactly how it works. It returns a zero if the strings are equal. And that can be a little surprising because zero equates to false. But they chose to implement it to return zero if it's equal so that they could use the negative and the positive number results in order to indicate whether it's less than or greater than. So if it's negative, string one is less than string two. If it's positive, string one is greater than string two. Another compare function has a little i added to it, and that allows the ignoring of case. And so it's best to use the ignore case function because uh, alphabetically speaking, the letters would sort differently based on case. Another set of really handy functions are conversions from the strings to integers and integers to strings. And this requires that you include the C standard lib header file. So A to I converts a C string into an integer. Um, A to L converts to a long. A to F converts to a double, F for float. And then um, you can go back the other way where you can convert an integer to a character string in C. Here's an example of that. 
You can just pass in the string literals, or you could create a variable that you could then pass in. So here we're just using the string literals and the integer to a character. It takes that number that we converted from a string into an integer, and it's going to convert that number back into this int care, which is a string. And in this case, it says it wants it to be in base 8, so it actually does the conversion from base 10 to base 8 based on what you're looking for. So if you wanted it to be our normal counting numbers, base 10, um, then you would have to put the 10 in there. Now if you try to convert a, a C string that doesn't have digits, the results are undefined. It could return a non-digit number, it could return zero. In uh, the modern libraries in C++ frequently that it will be defined to throw an exception and you'll be covering exceptions in CS2. When you're using the integer to character string function, be careful that you make sure that there's enough room to store that result because there's no bounds checking to, to see that it fits into that array and could be overriding that array. Since the integer to string for C strings does not manage the number of characters allowed in the array, it's best to use this toString function provided by C++ when you're working in C++. When we looked at arrays and functions, we learned how to pass arrays to functions as parameters, and so the C strings work the same way. They're just care arrays, so all the rules that you learned for passing arrays to functions apply to the C strings because they're simply care arrays. Here's a small example that it's writing, we're writing our own function to copy one string to another and the strings are just two character arrays that are being passed in. Remember that arrays are passed in by the address of the first element in the array, so we don't have to worry about passing them by reference because they are really already being passed by pointer, and therefore modifications will stay in the array as they come out of the function. So this function is copying everything from string 1 into string 2, and so it's looping through string 1 until it finds that null terminator on the first string and then putting that each character by character into the second string. Once it's gotten through all the characters, then it makes sure to also append that null character at the end. And as you can see, this function doesn't do any bounds checking either. Here's another example function of manipulating a C string. Again, we're passing in the character array. The name slice is meant to slice off the very first name or the first alphanumeric data in that care array. And so it searches for the first space. And if a space is not found, then it will stop at the first terminator. It finds that first space and replaces it with the terminator and therefore is slicing off the rest of it and leaving only the first set of letters and characters that are found before the very first space. And that wraps up our C string lessons in CS144.